and you can see the contrast is not fabulous on this. Um, actually, Kent, can, can you change this to black and white? Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 212 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is January, actually I don't know, 16th, <laughs> Tuesday, January 16th, 2024, and we are currently in Alabama. We are at the Wind Creek State Park, which is in central Alabama. I think the closest big city is Montgomery. We started in Birmingham and made our way down to here yesterday and we stayed here last night. Uh, I have toaster with me in the background here today. Also, I don't think you can see it that well, so we'll get something to like put over so you can actually see. It is so beautiful outside. We have this kind of a lake. This is a massive campground and we are one of only two people here on this loop. So it's kind of like this eerie but very cool experience right now. It's just like us and the trees and the cold. <laughs> we woke up this morning and there was frost on our picnic table. I think it got down to like the 20s last night. I know it's been really cold everywhere across the United States. So let me know if you got any snow. My parents got some snow in Nashville. No snow here, a little bit of ice, but it's already melted off which is great. Um, we have quite a bit to talk about um, on today's podcast. I've been working on my projects, uh, getting a lot of things done. We also have our first like mini travel vlog that's going to be happening in our, in our travel section of this podcast for the time we spent in Birmingham this past weekend with my brother. So I really hope you enjoy that. Uh, but before we get into everything, I would like to thank today's podcast sponsor, Skillshare. I want to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's podcast. Skillshare is the largest online community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. It's a new year and maybe like me, you're kind of getting that post-holiday itch to start something new. January is the perfect time to invest in yourself and your goals by starting a new learning path on Skillshare. I often get asked about how I was able to take my knitting and crochet hobby and turn it into a full-time job. And let me tell you that if I had Skillshare, it would have been a whole lot easier. The best feature I found is the curated learning paths, which are hand-picked classes that stack on top of each other to build up a set of skills. For example, if you're seeking out a creative career, I would highly recommend your creative business Build it, brand it, launch it. This learning path includes six lessons from highly skilled teachers to help you start your creative business. Maybe you want to begin a YouTube channel or start a hand-eyed yarn business. If you're ready to start something new this year, I have a special offer just for you. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Go unlock your creativity today. I can already hear Toaster snoring. <laughs> and sometimes that picks up on the uh, microphone and sometimes it doesn't. So if you do hear anything, it's probably just this little one. <laughs> Having a nice little post-breakfast snooze. Okay, my first project that I wanna talk about today, I am so proud of how much I have done. So I've got this in my uh, two skein size float tote, which is one of my patterns that I designed specifically for color work and has been very helpful in this case. And I had just started this last week. I actually ended up taking out what I had done, what I had shown in last week's podcast and restarting it, but that wasn't a huge deal. I only had the provisional cast on and a couple of rows. And I was really noticing that my gauge just didn't look right. It looked a little too big. I was using the um, suggested needle size for the pattern, which is a size five needle. And I should have known better. For me, a lot of the times I need to go down a needle size in order to achieve the right gauge, just because I have uh, kind of a loose, loose tension, especially with color work. So I went down to a US four on my Lantern Moon needles, 24 inch needle, and it is looking great. So imagine just a couple of rows done and then now look at everything. <laughs> 
<laughs> that I have done. I am actually getting pretty close to finishing this. I was keeping such a good pace um, over the last week, getting one to three of these motifs done per day, and we will go through each of them in just a second. Um, but I haven't done as much since we started getting on the road again. I just haven't had as much time to knit, but I think that I will be able to do a little bit more this afternoon. I think I have maybe five to seven more inches to go. Uh, the total is supposed to be 20 to 24 inches, and I think I'm at 15 right now. So here's what I'll look inside my bag. So I've got two cups for the two colors that I'm using the most. I will sometimes take these out of the bag, and then the other ones are just kind of resting in there. When I have three colors going, which is the case for this next chart that I just started, I will have two, like the two, um, accent colors in the little cups because I hold both of those in my left hand and I will have the main color out of the bag like in my lap or something because usually that's the one I'm throwing over to catch floats and all of that. So um, it's been working out really, really well. I've been trying to keep an even, like use these evenly. So every time I pick a new chart, I kind of look at which colors I haven't used in a minute, which colors I should be using next, and that's been working out really, really well, I think, so far. Not all of them have the absolute best contrast, but that's all right. Okay, so this pattern, I haven't even said that yet. This is the Rhinebeck Doodle by Jamie Lomax. Jamie Lomax is Pacific Knit Co. Um, and she has designed all of these amazing color work charts um, in like kind of packs, like in themes. You can get them on Ravelry as a full pattern, or you can get these little card packs, which is what I have. And I decided to do something fun with my card pack. And forgive me, I think I explained this last week as well, but I'm gonna repeat myself. But basically what I did, there are 24 cards in here. And same thing if you get the pattern online, 24 different charts, you don't need all of them. I think I'm gonna need, or I think I picked out 12. So I kind of went through and I went, okay, I wanna use this one, I don't wanna use this one, maybe this one, and kind of sorted them out. And then of all the ones that I wanted to use, I sorted them into things that were more um, picture-like, like these trees, or the sheep, or the llamas, or alpacas, whatever you wanna say for that. And then ones that were more kind of decorative backgrounds, like these leaves, uh, kind of like these flowery things. I kind of thought this was a little more background -y. And I just set those into two piles. And then, I, so I had my two piles that I wanted to use and I had Kit take one from each pile and just put them face down, stack them on top of each other. So what that allowed me to do then is every time I'm ready for a new um, motif, I will take it, I will flip it over, I will pick what colors I want to use for that one and so on. And I don't see the next one until then. So I have, I'm about to do this one which is a, and I'm not showing it too, you know, for too long because these, you know, this is somebody's copyrighted work. Um, oh, I just looked at the last one. I meant not to look at it, but I have two more left is what I was gonna say. Um, two more left after this one. So basically I have three left and then I will probably be done. I'll see if I need to do, you know, another couple inches or so. The other really fun thing about these patterns is that Aside from you can do them in any order, any colors, and make it just as fun as possible, you can do two different styles. So now that I actually have some knitting, as opposed to last week, I can show you that. So the first style is to do a single-sided cowl. So I would have stopped probably, I think like 10 inches in, and I would have worn it, I'm gonna fold it down, I would have worn it on my neck this way. Like where the hole is on the bottom would have gone over my head, and it would have been a single-sided cowl. I am doing the infinity loop one. So I'm gonna wear mine this way where it will, it will attach. So these two ends, obviously I don't have enough knitting yet, but these two ends will be grafted together. It will wrap around my neck like this and I will have double um, fabric. So it'll be extra, extra warm. So I think that's gonna be, you know, suit me well for the winter and then I'm going to really enjoy that. So uh, the yarn I'm using is from Fangirl Fibers. It is a pack specifically made for doodles. I saw that she does have some on her website right now, um, but I also uh, know that there are other dyers that do it. Uh, Pretty Twisted Yarns also has some doodle packs on her website, some Valentine's colors, which is really fun. 
So it was six 50 gram hanks of DK weight yarn. And that should give me enough to do this longer infinity loop. Okay, let's look at the charts so far, because I think it's just so fun. I'm gonna stand up so I can I can see my, my view. So the first one I started with is sweaters, and you'll be able to see it even better once I get things grafted, because it'll pull you know that cast on down and you'll really be able to see it. I've got these um, llamas. I'm thinking they're llamas because they have little saddle blankets, leaves, sheep number one, more leaves, trees, flowers-ish, sheep. This is where I started. I, I wanted to start using combinations that I hadn't used before, and you can see the contrast is not fabulous on this. Um, actually, can, can you change this to black and white? Um, this is such a great thing you can do before you pick your colors is look at on your phone, you can change your filter to black and white or take the picture and then change it to black and white. And you can see what's gonna give you contrast. So I actually already knew that the pink and the orange were not gonna contrast, but I thought, let me just try it. I haven't used them together yet. And like visually, you can go back to color now. Um, visually, you can see it in good light, but it was actually really hard to do at night. Um, same with this, not the highest contrast, it does work but I could kind of tell from using that black and white filter trick that it wasn't gonna be the highest contrast. So because it was just a small chart, it's not that big of a deal, but I would definitely do that, um, you know, before encountering an entire color work sweater or something where you're gonna put a lot of work into, you don't want to spend all that time and then find out that you can't really see it. Um, so. Again, there's only so many colors in this pack that contrast well with each other. So I'm just trying to come up with different combinations and I'm still happy with it. So I'm starting on, I just started on the socks. What's been really fun about this cowl is that I haven't done color work in a while. So I've really enjoyed that. I am a two-handed color work knitter, which means that I hold, okay, so this one has a white background. So I will hold the background color in my, right hand and I will hold the contrast color in my left hand and I'll use both hands as I knit. Um, but I have encountered a few three color charts in this pattern. So I've been working on my three color color work knitting skills. So what I have decided to do is hold, actually that's not really true, I don't really do this. I'm still holding the background color in my right hand and throwing it. I have the contrast colors right now, I have both in my left hand, um, but I can't really manage that that well. Sometimes I will do that, but what I'm doing most of the time is I'm actually picking up and dropping. So I may, I don't know if you can see this, I may like work the pink and then drop it and then pick up and work the burgundy and then drop it and pick up and work the pink. So I'm always holding the background color in my right hand, but the accent color, I'm like picking up and dropping. And honestly, I think that's okay. If that's how you need to do color work, it's pick up and drop and pick up and let go. I think better to do that than to have really uneven tension or just not do color work at all. Um, I'm hoping that eventually I will get more comfortable holding two colors in my left hand. So I'm practicing it here and there when it makes sense, but other times I'm just picking up and dropping, like I said. Okay, let me make sure. Oh, I guess the one other thing is, the reason that I got into this is we're doing a doodle make along in our membership for the month of January. So this has been really fun to make alongside our Love and Stitches members. They're making a lot of different doodle cowls or other smaller doodle motifs. Some of them are even taking the charts and trying out crochet, like Tunisian crochet, which is also very interesting. I saw somebody commented on last week's podcast, I believe, and said they wanted to try or maybe it was Instagram. It was somewhere where I was sharing the cowl and they said they wanted to try it with crochet. And to that I say, go for it. I think that would be really cool. Next up is my World Champ socks for Kent. And these have been through it. <laughs> Let me explain the project first before I get into all the details of what has happened this week. So this is some yarn from the Little Wolf Knits, Brianna, my friend. And Kent and Brianna dyed this colorway together for the Texas Rangers World Series champions. Um, so that's what the colors represent. And this is Kent's very first pair of hand-knitted socks. So I've really been kind of hemming and hawing over these. I have never made him socks before. 
So I don't really have a formula for him. So I'm using my perfect fit sock formula. I was a little bit lazy and I just measured the ball of his foot to get started from the toe. And that got me so far. And then I needed more measurements from him to figure out what I wanted to do uh, for the heel when I wanted to stop knitting on the foot and start working the heel and all of those things. So finally, a couple of days ago, I got the motivation to take his measurements, put them into my spreadsheet, which is my perfect fit sock formula, and get all of the calculations. Um, my perfect fit sock formula is for cuff down socks, but it still works for toe up socks. You just have to reverse things like the increases and decreases. So if you're somebody who has that course, you can reverse it. I am still hoping at some point I will have the brain space to sit down and rewrite the pattern so that it can be easily used for toe up. But I gotta work through my own <laughs> toe up sock first. But anyway, I sat down and did all of that finally, and I realized that I needed to pull out quite a bit of knitting that I had done. So I started here. I had actually probably worked about to here just in you know plain stockinette rows, but then I realized I needed to come back to here because I needed to do some increasing to prepare for the heel. So I pulled back, I did that, and then last night I had gotten halfway through my fish lips kiss heel, which is a short row heel. So <laughs> I was kind of feeling like the sock was looking a little, or the heel was looking a little bit big, um, but I never stopped to count my stitches, which is definitely something you should do at multiple stages of any pattern, especially at like certain checkpoints where you go from maybe a foot to a heel, it's a good time to stop and check your stitch count. Should have done that. Um, so I realized last night, after I'm already halfway through the heel, that I had done way too many increases in the foot and it looked absolutely ridiculous. Um, I've got a picture of what that looks like here because I feel like the video we just showed doesn't really do it justice. After I came back to where I needed to be, stopped at the number of increases I needed to do, it looked like it could fit a giant. <laughs> I think I had something like 60 stitches for just the heel. And just for a point of reference, my entire foot needs 60 stitches, actually less than that. So that was a ridiculous amount. So I, this morning, pulled back. I, what I had done, the, the way I made that mistake, is I knew I needed to do eight increases. So instead of doing four rows, like four sets of two, I did eight sets of two. So I did 16 increases instead of eight, resulting in far too many stitches and far too much length in the foot too. So once I got that back, it's now looking much more normal. I am just started on the heel again. Let me see if I can kind of show. I just started to do the short rows for the fish lips kiss heel. So it definitely widens here, but like in an appropriate amount. <laughs> uh, Kent also picked out this stitch marker. I told him to pick out a progress keeper for me to use while I'm making his socks and he picked this one out. Um, Kent, what's this thing called again? Swiss cake or something or ding -dong. Swiss ding dong or Swiss miss or something. Swiss miss is the hot chocolate. <laughs> anyway, he picked this out. I think it's really cute. I believe this one is from Simply Serving and I love changing up the markers to make, you know, a project feel a little fresh. So now we are rolling on this again. This is still sock number one. I have my numbers. I'm on the right track. I'm planning to do a rib for the entirety of the leg. Um, since I'm doing the fish lips kiss heel, I'm gonna do stockinette on the back half of the leg for just a, an inch or so before going into the rib on the back of the leg. But I wanna do rib because I think it will just really hold snugger on his leg all the way up. So I'm planning to do a three by one rib. I'm actually gonna copy Brianna. She made these socks, this colorway and made socks for Michael. She did a three by one rib. So I think I'm gonna copy her on that and do a three by one. It should work out perfectly because I will have, oh, actually it might not work out perfectly. I think I'm gonna have 66 stitches. So I might, I need to do the math on that. Maybe I'll do a two by one rib. I think that will work because I have a multiple of three. So maybe I'll do a two by one. Whatever it is, I'm gonna do rib, <laughs> planning to do rib for the entirety of the leg, but I should be there next week. So you can wait and see if that's what comes true. Last thing I've been working on here this week is 
my hexi blanket, my travel hexi blanket. Uh, this thing is starting to take up a lot of space <laughs> in my cubby. I'm so proud of myself. If you've seen on Instagram, I'm so proud of myself for having all of my projects fit in this cubby up here right above me. It's so convenient because I can actually put all my projects away. Whereas in the past, I've pretty much always had to have one work in progress, like sitting out on a seat, sitting in the front seat. Not a huge deal, but it is very satisfying to actually be able to put everything away in this van. And if you're watching Vlogmas, you know that we had that giant bag of Advents out on our floor for the past couple of months. And that is now at my parents' house, dispersed, distributed, cleaned up. It feels really good. We feel like we have so much more room <laughs> in the van right now. We're most likely going to do a van tour in next week's podcast. So I was kind of thinking about doing it in today's, but we decided against it because of the light and everything today. So we'll do it next week or in the future pretty soon. Okay, so my Hexi blanket, this is the a modified version of the Summer Fade Hexi blanket by Mallory Crawl. I am collecting yarns from all over the United States as we travel to yarn stores and dye studios and adding it into my blanket. So I Again, I feel really proud of myself. <laughs> I think that's the theme this week. I'm feeling very caught up. I got all of my yarns that I got this week added in. So we went to Paper Crane Yarns in Calera, Alabama. We did film a tour there and that will be coming in a few weeks, um, but we had such a great time there. The store owner, Ashley, is really, really sweet. She has the most adorable store. There was an original, like, kind of front couple of rooms and they've since expanded into the shop next door. So we got to see all of that, see everything renovated. Um, we even got to stay after the tour for a few hours for their weekly like sit and stitch and meet a bunch of people. So that was really, really fun. But something that I wanted to get of course was local hand dyed yarn and Ashley is a yarn dyer. So she started Paper Crane Yarns before she opened the Paper Crane Yarns store. So I got to get a bundle of minis from her and she just started doing these and they are gonna be available on her website. So um, Paper Crane Yarns, it is a bundle of five, this was five minis and it's called Favorites Number One. So it was five yarns, actually I need to look on my Ravelry page to make sure I name these colors correctly. Let me get that up, whoops. Just a reminder that I have every single color and every single photo of all of these hexagons on my Ravelry project page. I think I have one to add right now, but it should be done by the time the podcast goes up. Okay, let me find where I was. So exciting thing this week is that I started the fifth ring. So I am going to keep a stitch marker here on this hexi because this is the start of the fifth ring. It gets a little confusing because this looks like, you know, it's all attached right now. Like there's not a distinguished kind of step up from here. So I'm keeping the marker in. Um, this is a book stack marker uh, made out of polymer clay that my friend Stephanie that I got to meet in person for the first time at Paper Crane Yarns gifted to me. She said she found the charm um, somewhere where she was traveling and then she added it, you know, added it on the, le the lever back, excuse me, and made it into a stitch marker. And she said she thought of me because I am doing a lot of reading right now. So that was really sweet. So this right here was the end of the fourth ring around. And then this one is the start of the fifth ring. So each of these will have six hexes like across each side. So this entire blanket right now is still the shape of a hexagon and it grows by six hexes every single time and the sides get one hexy bigger every time. So the fourth ring had five hexes um, on each side and this one's going to have six. So the final hexy will go right here and it will be the six one like on this side and that side because the corners count for two sides. Does that make sense? I'm finally starting to understand how this blanket is being like coming together. So it helps me to understand it. Also, I believe this ring is going to have 30 hexes. I think that's right. Cause I think the previous one had 24 and then this one's gonna have 30. So the hexes that I did, out of the favorites number one bundle are right here, these five. 
and they are hexes 62 through 66. <laughs> Crazy, right? We haven't even made it to half of the states yet. <laughs> this blanket is going to be massive. All right, let's go through these colors really quickly because I think these are all really fun. The first one here is Mariner's Tale, which is a literary reference. This one is Caramel Latte. This one is Ara, which is Ashley's daughter's name. It has some speckles in it. It's really pretty. This one is Dried Poppies. And this one I actually haven't put up on my page yet, so I can't tell you. So we will have to put it on the screen. Let me see. Can I remember? I can't remember what it's called right now, but we'll have to put it on the screen. It's really pretty, kind of like a, it's coming off more orangey, like more terracotta colored on the screen, but it's definitely like a lighter, cooler color. So I'm all caught up. My bag, well, you can't really see inside of it. <laughs> My bag is empty. No more yarns to do. I'm really hoping to keep it that way as we travel. When I get a new yarn, add it into the blanket preferably while we're in the shop. That's always fun or right after. And I just keep this bag in here that has my crochet hook. It has some scissors and it also has um, the little tapestry needle that I use to weave in the ends. So that way, here it is, this guy. That way I'm always set up and ready to complete this project, which has been very great. So I need to take a picture, I think, of that last hexi there. I'll do that and add it to my project page. I forgot that I got something else at Paper Crane that I definitely wanna show off because I've been kind of keeping an eye out for this everywhere. Um, it is a project bag from Beautiful Sister. We've seen them in a couple of shops. I think they're out of Chicago. Uh, not 100% sure, but they make really great bags. Um, one of these is called the Heather. Is this one the Heather? There's two sisters and they each have a bag style. One is the zippered bag and then one is the like really cool, has the arm thing and the ties and I can't remember at the moment, but the fabric is what really caught my eye on this one. So if you look closely, you'll notice that there is a van here on the fabric. And we have seen lots of really cute fabrics with RVs, um, with like campers, uh, tents, you know, trees, all of that stuff. But we have yet to see a fabric with a van on it. So when I saw a van, I knew I just had to get it. And this has even more cute things. It's got trees, cactuses, gnomes, and just lots of pretty colors. And I debated between getting, there was one that had a dark gray canvas with a black handle and then, you know, this one with the tan and kind of the brown handle. And I went for this one because I don't really have anything like that. It just kind of caught my eye. So I'm very happy with this project bag. Um, it's a good thing I didn't bring a ton of project bags with me. This one's definitely a little bit of an extra right now, but I am looking forward to whatever project I start next because it's certainly going into that bag. This week, our travels have taken us from Nashville into, uh, well, I guess Tennessee into Alabama, but from Nashville to Birmingham and now down into Alexander, Alabama, I think is where we are, Alexander City, something like that. Um, we are heading to Mississippi next and continuing to make our way west. I'll be talking about all of the places that we are going to be where we are doing meet and greets coming up in just a second. Um, but we have been recording little snippets of things that have been going on in the last week to put together in sort of a mini vlog. We visited my brother in Birmingham and his girlfriend, and we had a really spectacular weekend just exploring the city. So please enjoy. Yesterday evening's all I met, 
There are a couple things that didn't make it into that vlog that I just want to highlight really quickly. Uh, before we left Nashville, I got to go to Bliss Yarns for their knit night and hang out and see lots of people. I have one photo from that night and it is not a photo that I took. So it's like zoomed in on two of us, but there was more of us in the photo <laughs> if you saw it on Bliss Yarns Instagram, but it was a really great time. Um, on our way down to Birmingham, we stopped at Bucky's and Bucky's is a massive gas station convenience store. They're, they boast that they have the cleanest bathrooms. It's huge. A lot of people absolutely love it. A lot of people can't stand it because it can be very, very crowded. It wasn't very crowded on this day. It was really great. Um, and this one had a couple of notable things that we had not seen before. They had a car wash. They had a dog like walking area, a pathed area that you could walk your dog. And they had a real life Bucky the beaver <laughs> inside that Kit and I both got our photos with. So that was really fun. And then the last thing is while we were in Birmingham, we didn't take any footage of this because one, you can't video when you're in the room, um, but we did an escape room and we made it out in under 40 minutes, which might be one of the best times that we have ever gotten in an escape room. We absolutely love doing them. So it was kind of a, a highlight to that day. This week's newest video is a yarn store tour at Four Pearls Yarn Shop, which is in Winter Haven, Florida. We actually visited back in early to mid-December and we got to stay for a knit night, come back the next day and tour the store, which was so much fun. They are the home of Emma's Yarn, which is something you may have heard of before. And there's a ton of Emma's Yarn there. They also have lots of kits, lots of their theme packs, which are mini skein bundles. I think there's 12 mini skeins in there. They have a mini skein wall of fingering weight and DK weight. It was just the most fun store. They do have other yarns aside from Emma's yarns and they put a lot of effort into their newsletter every single week. So if you're someone who is kind of seeking out that online community or a place to shop online, Hop on that newsletter. They put together a lot of yarn kits that you can, you know, peruse through to make different projects, you know, all the new patterns that are coming out, et cetera. Um, we did a fun segment in this one where we asked everyone that was there that day what their favorite Emma's yarn colorways were. So that was really interesting to see. And of course, we, as always, we sat down with the owner, Laura, and got to hear about how Four Pearls got started. So that was a really fun tour and we're excited to publish it and put it out there for our Florida stop. Um, next week, there's gonna be one of two things we still haven't decided yet. It's either going to be our Sorella yarn store tour or not yarn store, dye studio tour. Um, Sorella is located in North Carolina and we were there just a few weeks ago at the very beginning of the year. Um, it might be our next video or it might be the week after that. There's another video that I am planning to film. I just don't know if it will be before or after. So maybe Sorella next week or maybe the week after and it will be a surprise as what's coming up next week. We are going to be several places over the next month where if you are local or you know a drive hour or so away, whatever is comfortable for you, you can come and see us. The first place is actually today. So uh, Thursday, January 18th. You may be watching this after, I apologize, um, but we're gonna be at Wool Market Fibers in Gulfport, Mississippi from around 12 to three for their weekly sit and stitch. Um, after that, we're going to be at Yarny Gras in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, that is a shopping event. So uh, there's not a specific time where we're gonna be in one place where you can come and see us. We're gonna be there, I think for the whole three hours from 12 to three filming 
featuring all of the booths. So just come up and say hi if you see us, that is absolutely fine. Hopefully by then I have gotten my stickers. I've done a new order of stickers and business cards and they're on their way to my parents' house right now. So hopefully by then I will have gotten them shipped from my parents' house to me, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, the next weekend we are gonna be at Arkansas Yarn Co. in Malvern, Arkansas um, on Saturday, February 3rd from 12 to two. This one is a ticketed event. The store is actually going to be closed for this day, and the ticket is going to cover the cost of the snacks that they're going to provide. There's also going to be a goodie bag with a special mini skein. And then, of course, because they are closing the store, it kind of covers them for that day. Um, so make sure I'll put the link down below. Make sure you grab a ticket um, if you can come. The store will be open to shop as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Arkansas Yarn Co, Co we've been to before, um, but only briefly. So we're gonna be filming while we're there. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I'm excited. Um, lastly, this is as far as I know <laughs> in advance, um, we are gonna be at the Modern Skein in Montgomery, Texas on Tuesday, February 6th. So this is in the middle of the week. Um, we will be there from about 12 to three. That's usually when there are people there at the sit and stitch. So come and hang out with us. Um, we are just gonna have filmed in the morning. So we'll be hanging out after that and enjoying a little time to sit and relax. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it and our new little vlog and all of those things. We're really excited to be sharing more of what we're doing in our travels and also more in advance of where we're going to be so that we can meet more people. You could say we're getting a little bit better at this. At least that is the way that it feels to me. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.